Hi, my name is Gerald. Three years ago, we purchased this 2021 RAV4 Prime. And Nicole, my wife, and myself, we loved the car so much that we did a YouTube video about it. It was actually my first YouTube video. So after three years, I'm now going to give a long-term review about the RAV4 Prime. So for those of you that want a short video, let's just cut to the chase. We still love our RAV4 Prime. We've traveled across the country in this vehicle. Over three years, we put over 45,000 miles on it, with the majority of them camping. And we tow our A-Liner camper with our RAV4 Prime, and it weighs about 2,300 pounds fully loaded, and it's never failed us once. One of the amazing things about the RAV4 Prime is it's Toyota's second fastest automobile. <laughs> and, and you just wouldn't think about it that as a RAV4. So it's got somewhere around 302 horsepower and they don't even give the torque numbers, but I'm, I think it's right, right around 400 pound-feet of torque. And it gets zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds, which is really amazing. And so we're gonna do just a quick zero to 60. And when I get a good spot, then we'll, we'll check that out. I've got my camera pointed toward the speedometer. And so we'll see how this goes. go so we actually did multiple spins on the wheel so that was that was pretty cool really suffering to get traction back there but it's a it's a lot of fun to drive around town for sure so Toyota has always been known for its reliability and the RAV4 Prime it certainly lived up to the reputation all I've basically had to do is take it in for regular oil changes not one single glitch no problems at all with the car and it just keeps chugging along so in regards to any sort of battery degradation, even after three years, we're still getting the same amount of EV miles that we did when we first got the RAV4 Prime. My wife, she travels back and forth to work on a commute and it's right around 48 miles and she easily gets to work and back without having to use any gas at all. So when we take long trips and go camping, we usually get anywhere between 35 and 38 miles per gallon. Now when we tow, that number does drop a bit, so it drops to about 25 miles per gallon, but I still think that's pretty good. It's so great though to have an EV for your daily commutes where you don't have to use any gas, and then when you take long trips to not have that range anxiety and just to use gas, it just gives you a lot of peace of mind, and um, yeah, it's really great. So one of the great things about the plug-in hybrid technology is you don't have to add any special infrastructure in order to charge your car. So with a typical EV, you really need to add that extra infrastructure because the battery is so big. But with RAV4 Prime, you know, you just charge every night. You can just use your regular 15 or 20 amp outlet. It'll take you, you know, between 10 to 12 hours or so to charge it. And then in the morning, you just go and use it. Now, if you haven't noticed, EVs have been in decline. And I guess there's a number of reasons for that. They are kind of expensive, and so there is some depreciation, but a lot of folks just kind of get rid of them because they're really worried about that battery. And so a lot of manufacturers are starting to reconsider hybrid and plug-in hybrid technology. A lot of folks are really trying to get into the plug-in hybrid game, but Toyota had this figured out a long time ago. And so, yeah, now is actually a great time to get a plug-in hybrid. So another thing I absolutely love about our RAV4 Prime with premium package is it comes with a 1500 watt inverter. You can see I've got a coffee maker hooked up to it right now and I just brewed some coffee. Now I mentioned that we tow our A-Liner camper and what's great about having this inverter is I can power my camper. So wherever we go, we don't even have to worry about having electrical power because we can just plug in. We wanna go boondocking, just out in the middle of nowhere, no problem. We've got power with our RAV4 Prime. And what's great about it, it is it's silent. So there's no noisy generator making a bunch of noise. It's just that clean, silent electrical power. And if we do happen to run out of battery power, and that could happen if we're running the AC for a long time, no problem. We just drive the next day, and if we're driving to a trailhead, we basically turn on charge mode, and that'll charge the battery right from the gas engine. Coffee, anyone? The other thing that's really great about the RAV4 Prime is 
how well it does on the freeway. So it's just very comfortable. I think I'd mentioned the seats before and how comfortable they are. But the nice thing about the, the plug-in hybrid, when you hit the gas, it just goes like crazy. So for doing passing maneuvers on the freeway, on like one-way roads, it's really great. So you can see I'm doing like 60 miles an hour and then I'll gun it. It just knocks you back in your seat. It's really cool. So the interior of the RAV4 Prime, it's held up really well. And let me tell you, we beat the crap out of it. So when we go camping, we take our dogs and we go hiking. So the dogs get their paws all muddy. They jump into the Prime, jumping all over the place everywhere. And it's just, it's just held up great. Softex interior on the um, seats. It's just like brand new, so comfortable so easy to clean. Basically after our trips, we just kind of vacuum everything out and then wash everything down. And yeah, it just looks like brand new. So the next thing that I really love about the RAV4 Prime is just the overall driving experience. When you have a commute 50 miles or less, you're basically gonna be driving in EV mode. And if you've never drove an EV vehicle before, you know, it's just so quiet and you've got that instant torque it's just really, it's really a beautiful, beautiful experience. They've done a lot of things to the Prime to help with the overall driving experience. You've got acoustical treatment on the windshield, and so it makes the wind noise much quieter. You know, the cabin is, is much quieter. I think it has a combination to do with some that acoustical treatment that I talked about, as well as the batteries being underneath the vehicle which kind of deaden the road noise and with the batteries down low also gives the RAV4 Prime a very low center of gravity. Now I wouldn't consider the RAV4 Prime to be like a sports car because it is heavy but it drives very nicely and the way the suspension is set up it's just so comfortable whether you're you know on in the city commuting or whether you're on the highway driving like as a, as a highway cruiser, I would invite you, if you have a Prime close to you, take the Prime out, um, drive the hybrid and drive the regular RAV4 and just see what a difference it makes. It's a lot heavier so you can feel the weight, but it's so planted and because of the fact that you have all that torque from the battery, the weight, the weight doesn't bother this thing at all. It's a great experience driving this vehicle. So there are a couple of things that you should be aware of in regards to the RAV4. So first of all, it's a little bit old in the tooth. So it's been around in its current generation since 2019. And they're talking about a brand new RAV4 being available in 2026. Now, rumors are that the LE Auto Show in December of this year is when the new RAV4 is gonna be announced. And yeah, there's gonna be some changes. There's probably gonna be some improvements to the plug-in hybrid technology. The ICE engine only is likely going to go away and it's going to be replaced just by the hybrid. And finally, they're talking about an EV model being available. Now, if you want the latest and greatest, yeah, maybe you should wait, but <laughs> there's going to be a waiting list and they're going to be charging over MSRP again. And so now might be the time to strike. Maybe when December, when the new RAV4 is announced, you know, they'll be discounting the RAV4 Prime. Something to consider. So even though the RAV4 is pretty much tops in its class in regards to cargo capacity, it's still a relatively small SUV. And so if you've got dogs <laughs> and you got kids and you got cargo, you probably really wish there was more space. And I really wish Toyota would make a plug-in hybrid or a prime version of either the Sienna a minivan, that would be so cool, or the Grand Highlander. So yeah, I wish that was available. <laughs> One thing of note, and this is especially the case when towing and towing uphill, is you're going to notice that that CVT transmission combined with that four-cylinder engine, yeah, it makes kind of a gnarly noise, and I don't think it's under any sort of stress. That's just what the CVT transmission sounds like, because it has a tendency to rev high, and so when you're towing, especially uphill, you know, those RPMs are going to be a little bit high. That's one thing that some of the newer turbo-based hybrid engines, um, especially if they come out with a turbo plug-in hybrid engine, that might have a little bit of an advantage over the um, CVT 
four cylinder engine, but we'll just see how that goes. Now the RAV4 Prime, it has gone up in price since 2021 when you could get a base SE for $38,000. Now that same SE will cost you $44,000. But you no longer have to wait one or two or maybe even three years to get your RAV4 Prime. You can find probably find one on the lot and you won't be paying over MSRP. In fact, you'll probably get a discount on your RAV4 Prime. One of the things you might want to take advantage of is this thing called the EV lease loophole. I actually did a video on the mechanics of it, and you can find that video right here. 